Good morning, gentlemen. I'm coming to you again today from the Deanship of the Common Year at Majma University. We are continuing with our online version of the English Second Language course. As usual, I am your teacher, Dale Warren, and I am taking you as usual for speaking. The unit we are covering today is Unit 4 from Level 3. And we are using our normal textbook, the Q Skills for Success book, Book 3 of the Listening and Speaking series. All right, Q Skills for Success, Listening and Speaking, Book 3, and it is the one with the green picture on the cover, as you can see in the little icon in the top left-hand corner. If you don't have your book in front of you, please go and pause the book, the video, and go and fetch your textbook. I also need you all to have a paper and a pen with you. So if you don't have that also, please pause the video and go and get yourself paper and pen because we are going to have some work to do. All right, you should all have got yourselves the book and the paper and pen. The lesson contents that we are covering today are firstly modal verbs from page 80. Secondly, giving opinions and supporting our opinions from page 83. Our homework will be exercise A from page 84, and it will be an exercise in how we express our opinions. All right, everybody. Section A today is modal verbs on page 80. So I need you all to open in your textbook to page 80, modal verbs, and it is this section of the textbook here that we are looking at. Okay. Let us start with one or two definitions. Definition number one. A modal verb is a type of auxiliary verb. And remember, an auxiliary verb is a helping verb. A modal verb is a type of auxiliary verb that gives us the attitude of the speaker. Modal verbs come in front of the main verb, and when you put a modal verb in front of the main verb, the main verb then takes its base form. Remember that. Now, modal verbs can express various things. They can express Prohibition. Everybody please say prohibition. Alright. Something that is prohibited is something that you absolutely must not do. And if we want to express a prohibition using modal verbs, we usually use the modals must and can, but we use them in their negative form. You must not or you cannot. Modal verbs can also be used to express a strong obligation. An obligation is something that is a duty. It is something you must do or something that you are supposed to do. 
All right, so a strong obligation is something that you have a clear duty to do. Modal verbs can also express recommendation. Recommendation is something that you don't have to do, but it would be good to do. It's a good idea to do this, or it's a good idea not to do this. And normally, when we are expressing recommendation, we use the modal verb should for something that is good to do. And if it's a negative recommendation, if we're telling you this is something that is bad to do, then we would use should in its negative form, which is shouldn't. Modal verbs can also just be a statement of fact, telling you that you don't have an actual obligation to do something. And then we would usually use the phrase, you don't have to do this, or you don't have to do that. All right. A lot of these English words are probably strange to you, so I want you to say after me, obligation, obligation, recommendation, recommendation, okay, obligation we have covered, and prohibition. Now, if you don't know what that word prohibition means, if you don't clearly understand what it means for obligation or recommendation, I want you to get your English Arab dictionary, if it's an online dictionary or if it's a manual dictionary, and put in those three words, recommendation, put in obligation, put in prohibition, and when you have the Arabic equivalent, then write on your piece of paper prohibition, and next to it, write the Arabic word for prohibition. Write on your piece of paper obligation, and next to it, write the Arabic word for obligation. Write on your piece of paper recommendation, and next to it, write the Arabic word for recommendation. Okay, please pause your video and do that now, so that I know if we are going forwards that you clearly understand what those words all mean. Okay, our modal verbs take positive and negative forms. And like most English verbs, the negative usually comes in a long form or a short form. So if we have a look at our positives and negatives, positive form must the long negative is must not, and the short negative is mustn't. Can is our positive form, cannot is our negative form, and can't is our short negative form. Should is our positive form, should not is the long negative form, and shouldn't is the short negative form. Ought to is the positive form. Ought not to is the long negative form. And oughtn't to is the short negative form. I have to is a positive form. But if our subject is either she or he or it, then the positive form is has to. He has to, she has to, it has to. If we use the negative form, I do not have to, they do not have to, but he does not have to, she does not have to. 
if we use the short negative form, I don't have to, we don't have to, you don't have to. But if our subject is she, he, she, or it, then we say he, she, or it doesn't have to. Okay. So, this is the he, she, it form. Okay. So much for the positive and the negative forms. Now, let us have a look at the modal construction. The modal construction in its simplest form is a very basic four block construction. In our first block, we put the subject. In the second block, we put the modal verb either in its positive form or its negative form. In the third block, we put the main verb in its base form. And lastly, we put the predicate. So, he, subject, modal verb, can't in the negative form. Eat, main verb in its base form, and our predicate is spicy food. He oughtn't to, modal in the positive form, main verb in the base form, do, and predicate, nothing. She, subject in the first block, must, our modal verb in its positive form, Learn our main verb in the base form, and our predicature is English. Our subject modal verb in the negative form don't have to. The main verb is watch, and the predicate is that full. She has to modal verb in the positive form, base verb go in its, the, the, sorry, the main verb in its base form go, and the predicate home. She doesn't have to is the negative form, and it is the negative form of has to, but when it changes to the negative form, we don't say she doesn't has to, we say she doesn't have to. The have then also goes into its base form after the does. Okay, which is another auxiliary verb. So she doesn't have to go home. You ought to keep quiet. We have to walk to Panda. Right, all of you, please get your pieces of paper. On your pieces of paper, I want you sorry. To give me 
six sentences of your own with a subject, with the modal verb, and I've left the modal verbs, can't, oughtn't to, must, don't have to, has to, doesn't. A main verb in the base form, and then whatever object or predicate you like. All right, so all you have to do on a piece of paper, I need you to give me six sentences. One, two, three, four, five, and six. The first one using the modal verb can't. The second one using the modal verb oughtn't to. Third one using must. Fourth one using don't have to. Fifth one using has to. Sixth one using doesn't. Very simple. You will start with the subject. You have got the modal verb. You put your main verb in its base form and then an object. All right. Please pause your video on your piece of paper. Make me those six sentences. And then when you have done that, unpause the video. Okay. I am going to give you six sentences of my own, but you can make any six sentences that follow the pattern. You can't be serious. You is our subject, can't is our modal, be is the base form of the verb to be, and as our predicate we are putting serious. Ali oughtn't to tell lies. Ali is our subject. Oughtn't to is our modal verb in its negative form. Tell is the base verb from to tell. And our predicate is lies. The girls is our subject, must, cook is the base form of the verb to cook, for their brothers is our predicate. So we can have the subject, girl, the girls. Modal verb in the positive form must. Base verb cook. And for their brothers is a predicate. Okay. We and remember don't have can be we, they, are, or you. We don't have to work on Fridays. So, we is the subject. Don't have to is our modal verb. Work is the main verb. And our predicate is on Fridays. He, she, or it will take the form has to. So we will use Inaz because Inaz is she. She has to find. So we have Inaz as our subject. We have the modal has to. We have found as the base verb, and we have a predicate, a better job.
Okay. Kate doesn't have to. So Kate is our subject. Modal verb doesn't have to. Found a new husband is our predicate. All right. So any thing that follows that pattern in the first box, you put a subject. Second box, we gave you the modal verb. Third box, a main verb in base form. And in the fourth box, a predicate. Anything that follows that pattern is fine. Okay, let us carry on. Page 80, exercise A. This is the exercise. And in this exercise, wherever you see a number, it has above it two modal verbs. Don't have to or can't. Must not or don't have to. Have to or can't. And it goes on to the top of the next page. Also, should and have to, shouldn't and don't have to. Right. We are going to be doing the speaking exercise, the listening exercise. So what we are going to do, we are going to listen twice to the conversation. And each time you need to listen and whichever option is correct, you need to put a circle around the correct option. Unit 4. Grammar. Activity A. Oh, look at that ad. Those poor animals. How can they show them suffering like that? I think it's terrible. Really? I think it's quite effective. They're trying to get your attention, you know. Well, they don't have to do it that way. It's not necessary, and it's upsetting. You don't have to look at it if you don't want to. That's not the point. That kind of advertising makes me really angry. I'm sure there's a law that says they can't use animals like that. Maybe you should complain then. Yes, I think I will. They shouldn't be allowed to do that. All right. Let us listen a second time because it is not that clear when you listen to the recording over another video. So I will read it aloud. Oh, look at that ad. Those poor animals. How can they show them suffering like that? I think it's terrible. Really? I think it's quite effective. They're trying to get your attention, you know. Well, they don't have to do it that way. It's not necessary and it's upsetting. You don't have to look at it if you don't want to. That's not the point. That kind of advertising makes me really angry. I'm sure there's a law that says they can't use animals like that. Maybe you should complain then. Yes, I think I will. They shouldn't be allowed to do that. Okay. If you didn't get all five answers, just move your video back a minute and a half and listen again. Okay. For those of us who've gone through and you got all the answers, they should be as follows. All 
All right. The correct answers are number one, don't have to. Number two, don't have to. Number three, can. Number four, should. And number five, shouldn't. Please go through and check that those are the options that you have circled correctly in your book. And if you haven't got all the correct options, please change them to the correct options. All right. The next section we are covering today is on page 83. And it's very similar to the section we did in the last unit. It is about giving and supporting your opinions. Okay, page 83, and this is the section we are looking at. Giving and supporting your opinions. All right. Again, we will start with one or two definitions. Definition number one. Giving an opinion means telling other people what you think or what you feel. Definition number two, supporting your opinion means giving a reason for your feelings. It means telling somebody why you feel the way you feel. All right. So, in... A book. In English, if you give an opinion, you will often use one of these phrases. You will say, I think that, or I don't think that. Or you can say, in my opinion, or you can say, in my view, or if you ask me, or as far as I am concerned, and when somebody asks you why you feel that way, or if you want to tell somebody the reasons you feel that way, you normally give your supporting opinions, giving a reason, and you would start with words like because, or as, or since, or for example, or for instance, or to give you an example. So you can use those phrases when you are giving a reason for your opinion. So in the example, in my opinion, there's too much advertising on TV these days. To give you an example, a program I watched last night had ads almost every 10 minutes. If you ask me, they shouldn't show ads in the middle of programs on TV. They, she gives an opinion, in my opinion. Then she supports it by saying, to give you an example. And then, if you ask me, she is giving her opinion again. All right. So, if you need to give an opinion, or if you need to support your opinion to give a reason for it, these are all useful phrases that you can use in English. Okay, now, to, go, to do another short exercise, there are three opinions here. There are three reasons for having those opinions. I want you to read through the three opinions, one, two, and three. I want you to read through the three reasons, A, B, and C. And then I need you to link the opinion to the right reason. So if your opinion number one links to reason B, then you would put 
1B. All right, so you need to link the correct opinion to the correct reason. So please pause your video, read through the opinion, read through the reasons, and then restart the video. Okay, let us go through it together. You should have all done the exercise at home on your paper, but let us go through it together. I think Sharifa is a bully. For example, he got 100% in quiz 1. No, that reason doesn't follow that opinion. I think Sharifa is a bully. For instance, Hamid asked her to marry him. Well, that doesn't support the opinion she's a bully. I think Sharifa is a bully because her husband is frightened of her. That opinion is logically supported by reason C. So, in my view, Ali does well in tests. For example, he got 100% in quiz 1. Yes. That opinion is logically supported by reason A. Three, if you ask me, the boys all like Lisa. For instance, Hamid asked her to marry him. That opinion is logically supported by option B. So the answers that you should have got for the exercise are 1C, 2A, and 3B. All right, moving on. The exercise that we are now doing for homework is on page 84. It is exercise A. And again, it's a listing exercise, and we have to fill in the missing words. It is easier because the missing words are all the words from page 83 over here. Phrases that come from page 83. So if you're stuck, just look back to page 83 to this little block giving and supporting your opinions, and these will be the words that they use. Okay, you should all have your pens and paper in hand, and we are now going to do the listening exercise. Unit 4. Speaking Skill. Activity A. Hey, look at this ad. It's got six famous people in it. So what? If you ask me, they should spend less on these expensive ads and lower the price of their clothes. Hmm. But I like seeing famous people in ads because it makes it kind of cool. As far as I'm concerned, there are better ways to advertise things. For instance, they could have some facts and statistics or something. You know, some information. But it's an ad, right? In my opinion, an ad should get people's attention. And using famous people does that. Well, I guess it's eye-catching, but I'm not sure how effective it is. All right. If you didn't hear it 100% clearly the first time, I will read it again. You should be able to get all the answers now. Hey, look at this ad. It's got six famous people in it. So what? If you ask me, they should spend less on these expensive ads and lower the price of their clothes. Mm, but I like seeing famous people in ads because it makes it kind of cool. As far as I'm concerned, there are better ways to advertise things. For instance, they could have some facts and statistics or something, 
you know, some information. But it's an ad, right? In my opinion, an ad should get people's attention. And using famous people does that. Well, I guess it's eye-catching. But I'm not sure how effective it is. All right. If you still didn't get all five answers, just move the video back a minute or two and do it again until you are pretty sure of your answers. And as I say, if you didn't hear answer 100% clearly, it will be something from page 83. Okay. What I need you to do when you have filled in all of the five missing phrases, take a photograph of this exercise, exercise A on page 84. Attach the photograph to an email, head the email homework and send it to your speaking teacher. Okay. So, our homework is page 84, exercise A. You must fill in the missing blocks. You must take a photograph of the page. Attach the photo email head the email homework and send the email to your speaking teacher. All right, so this exercise is our homework, exercise 84a, and it needs to go as a photograph to your speaking teacher when you have finished it. Thank you very much, gentlemen, and you will hear from me again sometime next week.